going into a mental institution was not the best feeling in the world to wake up to. Um, but when I woke up, I just kind of accepted it and realized that I was there and just went about my day. Going in there, I, I definitely felt crazy. But when I came out, I learned a lot about myself, not because of the psychiatrists or the therapists that were there, but because it just gave me a time to be by myself and to think. It gave me a quiet place, cut off from everything. Another thing that I have uh, have a history of doing is running away. I've ran away a lot. And uh, even just last year or two years ago, I, I ran away. But I never run away to truly run away. I run away to find a quiet space for me to think. And that's what this experience at this mental institution was. And it proved to be very um, enlightening of my own capabilities as a human being and kind of what I'm here to do is my life purpose. I was in that mental institution for five days and one thing I started to notice was how much all the other kids in there would gravitate toward me and it was weird but I, I would always be the most participative one in the in the group sessions so I'd always raise my hand I'd always give feedback to all the other kids that were in there and I think I was the oldest kid in there there were like 12 other, 15 other kids or something like that. Also diagnosed with a lot of mental conditions. Um, and, you know, it's... I don't like that. <laughs> I really don't like the labeling of kids. It just makes us all feel crazy when we're not. We're just human. But yeah, I went in there and there's this guy with long hair, like skater, kind of looked like a pothead. Um, no offense, but looked like a pothead. He kind of talked like a pothead too. He's like... Mm. But when I came in there, um, there was a group session happening and I had to introduce myself to the group and this guy randomly just raised his hand and he's like, excuse me, can I say something? You. Me. You. I don't like you. You can punch me if you want to, but like, <laughs> it was like that was a pretty interesting thing I woke up to. All of these kids were in different states of consciousness. Now my experience with this kid, his name is Christian. Um, during the group sessions while we were sharing, I learned that he liked Wing Chun and martial arts. So I was like, oh hey, my dad's a certified master. And so I showed him a few things and then uh, he would always call me Shifu Paris or Master Shifu in there. <laughs> and what I would also do in that mental institution was draw and write. Um, I quit writing for a really long time, but it was in that mental institution where I kind of picked it back up again. Um, because, well, there's nothing else I could do. So pencils were my livelihood. We had these little tiny pencils like this big and we weren't allowed to bring them to my room but I kind of just snuck them in my pants and just brought them to my room so I could write or draw uh, in my room. Like I, I would make a lot of drawings in there for all the other kids. Like people would ask me, be like, oh sure, I'll, I'll draw your name or something. And Christian, I guess, saw that and he went out of his way to grab, to find like the sharpest little pencils that he could find. And at the end of the day, at the end of uh, when we had to go to bed, he would come by my room and he'd be like, Hey Paris, here you go, I got the sharpest ones just for you. Here you go, man. <laughs> I'm like, oh my god, thank you, man. It was, like that was, and just that little thing of kindness, it was like, whoa, that, I don't deserve that. <laughs> Toward the end of when it came to me leaving, there was a final group session and we had to explain what we thought good self-esteem was. And then Christian raises his hand. And he says, I know who, I know what good self-esteem is, Paris. And I was just sitting down, I was like, what? <laughs> he continued to explain, like, Paris is what good confidence is and good self-esteem. I mean, first of all, you just look at him. He's standing so upright and all he does is care about everyone in here. And he teaches me Kung Fu and he, he was just saying all this crazy stuff. And it was so, I... I guess showed me that I could be appreciated. There's this other girl in there, her name is Haley, and she was a writer. When I meet people, this is something I always ask, what are you passionate about, or what, so what do you do? Uh, and she said, I like writing a little bit, and I was like, oh really? Uh, show me some of your poems. And she showed me some of her poems, and they were really good. They were really good. And so I said, when you get out of here, keep writing. Keep writing, because you're so good at it. And um, I guess she's never had someone tell her that before. And when I, when it was getting close for me to leave the day I left, she wrote me notes saying that 
she doesn't know what she's going to do once I leave. That, like, she wouldn't have anyone to talk to or no one to, and then, like, it was, it was crazy. Like, that I could be that important to somebody, to multiple people. And there's another kid whose name escapes me. And he tried uh, sexually harassing one of the girls in the mental institution, um, and he's kind of a scary kid, like he's very violent. I'm violent with myself, he's violent externally with his surroundings and with people. Kind of scary, but um, there was a time, one of the rare few times we were allowed to go outside, um, I made an effort to connect with him and to ask him about his backstory and where he's from because he doesn't participate in, in the groups. And also outside, when we'd be able to go outside, I'd, do flip, I'd flip around, you know, I'd just be me, I'd dance, uh, whatever. And I asked him what he liked to do. And he said, oh yeah, I like, to, I like to dance, I like to break dance. I'm like, what? You like to break dance? Like, me too. And I asked him to show me something. And then he was like, oh, okay, I haven't done it in a long time. And he started doing windmills. <laughs> he started doing windmills on the grass. And I was like, dude, why don't you do that anymore? This kid who tried sexually harassing one, one of the other uh, curl, girls in there, he's, he breaks, he's a dancer. Oh, man, you do, you're hella good. Why don't you, when you leave here, keep dancing. And then, like, this kid who is, like, really big and, like, like tough looking, like, he doesn't deal with anyone's shit or something. Like, he did this thing where he's, like, oh. like, like, so humble, so, like, oh, thanks. Like, maybe I can. Yeah, I'll, I'll do that. And that felt good. 